The Volkswagen Arteon today in our full review on Auto Gefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas, we're going to take a detailed look here on the exterior of this very elegant vehicle. Interior also fitting to the exterior color today and of course the driving experience. But I'll tell you everything you need to know about the different engines you can spec, the different specs on the interior and everything you need to know about this new Arteon, the successor of the Volkswagen CC and everything of that in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! The Arteon has a massive stance on the road, also stressed by this new design element, the basic visual lengthenment of the hood. So this is the design trick, but it's a separate part of course. LED headlights come from standard equipment and also this beautiful LED daytime running light signature. So this one attracts a lot of attention and this design language will also be carried out over to other VW vehicles soon. 4 meters 86 or 16 foot is the total length of the Arteon. That's really somewhat longer than normal Volkswagen Passat, so it's stretched, especially also in the wheelbase. It starts with 17 inch rims, then there are two trims above the base trim. It's Elegance and the R-Line. So the R-Line a little sportier, Elegance a little more elegant, but they're pretty similar in the interior. Um, then 18 inch comes with the trim levels, but then optional 19 and here 20 inch, the biggest one available, all in black. And look at this design line overall, I mean, all flat, small windows. This will have an effect on the overview from the interior. I can tell you later, chrome strip on the lower part or chrome look, and then falling roof line right there and this coupe style in the rear part. Then this stance here, dropping line above the door handles. You can see the, the divide and light and shadow. I think it's really a design masterpiece. I just love it design-wise. What do you think? Tell me. The R-Line trim, by the way, automatically gets the DCC, the dynamic chassis control. It's the adaptive suspension where you can pick the driving modes. They make little difference then. However, this one here is optionally equipped because this one here is an elegance trim line. But again, depending on the options you pick, you can hardly differentiate those then. Then the taillights here in the rear, they are stretched horizontally, again, to stress the width of this vehicle. The Arteon letters, very prominent, like from a big luxury vehicle. So it's not exactly the successor of the, um, uh, of the Phaeton, but somewhat it appears also like this because it also appears bigger than it actually is. Then this integrated wing they formed here, big VW logo, flip it to open the trunk. Well, only those exhaust tips, they are pure fake again. But I think also very impressive rear design. Let's now take a look at the interior. 
you see here frameless windows pretty special then a nice material quality here with this aluminum look and soft touch at the inside of the doors as well and the seats right there here in a bright combination that looks pretty fancy the base would be fabric and then in the elegance or r-line optional trim levels you can get those alcantara on the inside and animal skin on the outside however i'm not sure why they haven't just put leather leather leatherette right here so that's not a wise decision but still it's good that we also have an alcantara premium seat available Again, they are based in the R-Line and Elegance trim level, as it is right here now. This is Elegance. Then the steering wheel, we know it. And also the rest is basically taken over from the Volkswagen Passat. Digital gauges optional, you can get here. You don't have to go for it. Overall bright, clean and elegant design. Here also with aluminum pedals. An entry cap this is also the ergo comfort seat the only strange thing is well electric here for lumbar support and the back part but then manual for pumping it up and also for the length control hmm strange i love would make it all electric or all manual what do you think by the way this one is very clever the in lengthening for the front part you see there's not a gap anywhere appearing right here clever solution also to be able to clean it easier so let's get inside the door doesn't open that wide and rather low seating position steering wheel can be adjusted pretty easily in all of the four ways the seat again here you can pump it up your forward pretty easily done just a little confusing that only the back part is electric then for that you'll also be just fine with the base fabric seat because that one is even staying a little bit cooler even in summer than the alcantara ones those ones here of course look a little bit fancier headroom wise there's no panoramic roof here you can optionally spec that one then a lot of headroom remains i'm one meter 86 or six foot one so with taller people then not sure about the panoramic roof it will still fit to me at least and we'll see how that one plays out in the rear and again here you see already this huge b pillar that is uh, blocking the view to the rear a little bit and also the windows are all pretty slim so the overview is really a little bit diminished by the overall elegant design on the exterior interior overview a horizontal stress here also with the air vents soft touch on the top of the dashboard aluminum style very elegant and clean 6.5 or 9.2 optional the infotainment systems this one here the biggest one available the smaller one also comes with um, physical knobs the bigger one comes without any physical knobs then you just have those touch buttons right here apple carplay connection also available soon a little bit more details to that then the steering wheel has a normal compact size acc controls on the left then the small display in the front controls on the right here again the digital gauges but you can also stay with the manual ones climate controls the classic here with normal uh, knobs to turn also for the seat heating the steering wheel heating which is optionally available is on the right side to the gear shifter pretty strange position but i i really think it's really nice that you have such an option then the dsg shifting stick but it's also available as a manual with other engines not with this very engine driving modes well um they change a little bit comfort a little bit softer dcc the dynamic chassis usually you just stay in this mode because it's just good and with sport you make the suspension a little bit stiffer that's the main difference then then in the front well you can put a key here in the front but it's very slim overall so your mobile phone does not really fit there although there's one usb slot the second one will then be under the armrest and there it is a little bit more room to store your mobile phone and in front of that we got those adaptive cup holders nicely done electric handbrake and another 12 volt power supply of all well beside of the mobile phone the storage spaces are quite nice also here for bigger bottles 
or then also with the standard size glove box right there. Digital instrument panel, it's not flickering in real life by the way, so you have nice visualizations. You can have, uh, for example, the GPS view in there, right there, but also, for example, the consumption infos and audio and Bluetooth telephone connection or the Apple CarPlay, different possibilities. And then you can also change the views at all. So um, what you want to have in the left or in the right gauges, you can then change from here, for example. So a lot of flexibility available, but again, you would also be just fine with the analog gauges. Here you can also make it wider or smaller again. It's not flickering in real life, just to say it again. And the head-up display, here this small glass flips out and then you can see the speed, maximum speed allowed and also the ACC controls on it. Again, this is also not flickering for your eyes just because our cameras are faster actually. And the main infotainment unit here at the moment with Apple CarPlay, but the home menu looks like this. You can also use those swiping functions like this, always when the small hand symbol is being displayed. You can do it like this with a gesture control. Bluetooth telephone connection would also be possible, the simple one. Then there's this home screen which you can individualize, for example, the GPS map, the app connect, or whatever you want to have first. Volume control is here, but easier is to do it at the steering wheel directly. And then you also have, for example, some vehicle information uh, status. What is interesting, the setup here, because then you can also change the ambient light. And the thing is, you can, for example, here, yellow, white, and blue. And there's also this, this top light. And I would strongly advise against this top light because in the night it's really blinding. So here we go with the rear entry. And well, you have a lot of room there. It's a long vehicle and wow, a lot of knee room left there. So um, it's already good in the Passat. This one here, is, of course, has a longer wheelbase. You can actually use that one as a chauffeur car. Maybe they could make the rear bench a little bit longer. But overall, also a very comfy seating position here. Headroom, when I'm sitting upright, I can still put a little bit more than my flat hand over my head. So also for tall persons, it's fitting here in the rear. Also have hangers here, to so handles to hold tight. I like that, by the way, the design with the bright seat belts here, together with the bright Alcantara seats on the inside. That is very neatly done. Um, also seat heating available for the rear seats and separate climate control if you like to. You can flip the seats from here as well, top tether behind, isofix points in the front for the outer seat. And then you can have this armrest with cup holders and that will also serve as a ski hatch so you can reach through from here. Of course we'll take a look how that one looks like from the trunk. Overall, very comfortable here also in the rear. What about a third person? Well, it's a little bit harder here in the middle and you know, with a big middle tunnel here for the all-wheel drive. Um, yeah, you can of course sit better, but still somewhat okay. I wouldn't recommend it for long journeys. The all-wheel drive, by the way, well, it is here front plus rear, so is it so important? Well, you know, with the 240 horsepower we have with this diesel engine here, it's uh, of course useful to to have it because otherwise not all power could be transported just for the front wheel so what about the trunk flip the logo right here then this huge hatch opens and there we go well you have a versatile opening see how wide here it is here this button on the right is by the way to flip out the towing equipment and then well i can put a suitcase in here that you can see how that one plays out right there you can also push it through. It raises a little bit in the rear area, but you see you're really flexible, just limited a little bit in height. This is the difference then to the variant. And to flip the seats, you have to go around actually, and then have a one third, two third split right there, but there was also the ski hatch available. So you can see how that one plays out. Then you can also load through the longer things. And here you can see again how massive this hatch is. Watch out for your basement garage or your garage when you open it. But you can also limit it in the opening height. That's no problem. 
So if you go to the hatch closing button right there and if, for example you pull a little bit lower manually and then hold this button just for a few seconds. Heard that sound? Also get a light signal from the rear lights and then every time it opens it will stay in this position so you can really adjust it as a clever feature to individualize it. And the liter figures by the way 560 liters or when the bench is flipped 1560 liters. Well the for motion the all-wheel drive is not a necessity here in this vehicle. It is a front plus rear wheel drive um, on demand with the Haldex clutch. Uh, well you can use it if you have the powerful engine and you don't have too much wheel spin in the front. Other than that this is surely an engine you you know or a basic car you can also drive in a relaxed manner. Okay guys, the driving part of the VW Arteon. And the way I'm standing here now and looking to the left, there's actually no problem to see any vehicles approaching. But let me, at the first part here, already tell you what is actually the biggest weakness of this vehicle. And that's the shoulder view. So, let's say I would be on the right lane here now and then I'm gonna go to the left again. And to the left and I basically see nothing. Then the general driving feeling of this vehicle. Now standing still, it's pretty silent, well insulated as we also know from the most Volkswagen vehicles. You get a very spacious feeling also when driving, a very relaxed feeling. You sit very comfortable on those seats, you can adjust them every way. However, as I said in the interior part, also while driving, it's sometimes a little bit strange of, wait a minute, what can I do electronically and what can I do manually? Ah, ah yeah, the back part of the seat, that is done electronically and the lumbar support, but the rest manual. So this mix is a little bit strange, what is electronic and what is manual then. You hardly need any big uh, throttle movements because the car is really very good performing and the only thing is now is usually in a normal driving mode shifting up quite early so what you can do is use, use, the, use the shift pedals when you want to overtake go back two gears or so and then you can really get a good performance and it drives directly through so otherwise you would need to wait for the kick down so that's not a turbo lag that's the kick down of the gears here again when I'm going um, 100 to uh, 120. When I shift down two gears, that happens so fast. So two clicks down, fifth gear then, bam, and 120. So that's really very quick, great performance. You hold the right shifting pedal again when you want to go to the automatic shifting mode when you go, when you go back there or you can also use the, the big gear shifter here. There's also the other alternative that you, that you go to the sport mode, the moment D mode, sport mode, pull it back once and then you're automatically in lower gears. So the gears are turned up higher shifting up later and shifting down again earlier. So for example when I'm here now at 50 kilometers an hour now getting off the motorway fourth gear or when I put it into D I would exactly be getting one gear higher again. Test it here again and also see steering now already third gear at 30 kilometers and when I go to the sport mode shifting down earlier once more. So maybe you've already seen my steering commands and that is really first of all smooth without any effort but at the same time they have managed that although it's quite light in the control it does not feel that unnatural because they have this progressive steering that means i don't need long steering or big steering angles so when i have a 90 degree turn i also turn the wheel the steering wheel 90 degree and that's really comfortable. It feels good for sporty driving and at the same time 
it's somewhat comfortable for you know parking in and out. However, it's not a small vehicle. Also, the turning circle is quite big. So, of course, it's not the best city vehicle. Now, finding narrow parking spots is somewhat tricky. And that's also the disadvantage to a Volkswagen Passat. The Passat is still shorter. It feels a little bit more agile to drive. You do feel that this one here, driving-wise, more comes close not to the midsize segment like VW Passat, Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class, Jaguar XE. This one here from the driving feel rather comes close to Jaguar XF, BMW 5 Series, Mercedes E-Class, Audi A6. And that's also what they are trying to do here with Volkswagen. They try to step up the game and even try to be a reasonable cheaper alternative to this upper mid-size segment vehicles because if you think about company cars having a whole fleet of either let's say Audi A6 or VW Arteon maybe the fleet manager says wait a minute I can save like a five digit digit figure in euros or dollars each year something like that and that might be a good thing and here with the VW Arteon hardly anyone will complain because to drive this vehicle it really feels very sovereign it's a great motorway car so much stability also due to the longer wheelbase so running straight on the motorway it's really a pleasure however it's not you know lazy in a way so it, it feels agile enough so you can also still have a lot of fun with this vehicle so that's not really a problem and I think this could actually work, especially for fleet customers, that you have a somewhat exclusive vehicle, but still don't, don't go too high in the prices. However, if you could equip it with a lot of things, and also here with the bi-turbo diesel, I think it's getting expensive. So I will try at the later stage to also deliver you a driving impression with the 1.5 liter TSI, which is now the entry level engine. And this could actually also work for this vehicle because it's a good engine. The vehicle here is still on the MQB platform. That's also why the engine can be equipped uh, with that. And although it's a long car, you know, some of the other longer cars in the Volkswagen Corporation, also for example, the Audi A4 sit on the MLB platform for the longitudinal mounted engines. This will change over time. So this one at the moment, the last A4 generation sitting on MLB, later on it will also be MQB. Right next to us, by the way, a normal Passat variant, so the Estate. And yes, the Arton is somewhat a mix of the Estate and the sedan, versatile with this big hatch, at the same time elegance in, in its appearance. So when we're driving around with this vehicle, by the way, and look of the reaction, people standing at the travel like other vehicles and so on, we see a lot of positive and astonishing reactions. So many people have asked us, hey, what's that car? So they don't really know because this design language here is not really known from Volkswagen yet. And so people wonder, what is it? Is it a Volkswagen actually? And then, oh, you know, it's a VW. Really? And what's it called? Arteon. Oh, never heard of it. So I think that's steadily comes uh, to appearance very interesting and I think it proves that they design wise have created something that really appeals to people and gets them interested by the way I'm looking through the head-up display all the time now and although it's not the you know expensive way of projecting directly into the windshield we have this small plexiglass layer which is popping up it gives you a pretty clear view of the speed and the maximum speed allowed and also which speed you have put in the adaptive cruise control which we've equipped with this vehicle here setting the distance and then the distance the car in front of me is being kept but i'm going over to the right side that you want that you can see here the blind spot monitor see here it appears in yellow now pretty clearly that is your lifesaver in this vehicle so important again to see it 
That's a Golf, by the way, the Golf variant, now the Passat variant, now the left next to us. And the other Passat variant we've just seen is now behind us. You know, Germany, all full of VWs, of course, the Golf. About 230,000 Volkswagen Golf are newly registered in Germany each year. And then the next car, you know, those ones are Passat, Polo, Mercedes C-Class, we know 3 Series, such cars, Ford Fiesta, but they really follow with a big distance. So, and soon we are also able to accelerate. If you wonder about that, why is a truck overtaking us? He thinks he can accelerate further or earlier than anyone else is allowed to. So, now again, for example, we can do this um, sport mode, an 80 to 100, just a small sprint. Let's see how that person plays out in sport mode. And you will see the sport mode does a faster kick down because we're already in a lower gear. With D mode, seventh gear. S mode, immediately sixth gear. Hammering it now, bam, 100. See, that one comes really fast then with the S mode, so you can always go into that one and you're quite fine. Assistance systems are working flawlessly. Again, here, when the next vehicle approaches, you can see the blind spot monitor appearing there, and it's really appearing very early. I think that's very important, especially in this vehicle. The adaptive cruise control reduces the speed until zero kilometers an hour, and is actually a very reliable system. I love that. And you can also change the distance you want to have, for example. And let's test this vehicle here in this roundabout. You see it's agile enough. However, you do feel the weight pushing you to the outside. So it's quite hard, this area here at the knees. This part, not too comfortable, but then again, the steering, you see how the progressive steering works, slalom-wise. So astonishingly agile still the vehicle, although it's not the lightest one, not by far. So it is really a lot of fun going right here and now the next corner look at the performance really nice to steer to have fun now the acceleration on the diesel really works pretty well so in a lot of driving performance and habits really great what we've seen from the Volkswagen Arteon I'm really super satisfied the only thing is really the visibility to the side there. Um, I'm not sure if they could made the B pillar a little bit less thick. That would have been, you know, something cool for sure. So what do you think here of our uh, driving impressions? And now to our conclusion for today, VW Arteon. Well, it is not the exact successor of the CC because it's a somewhat different vehicle. It is somewhat close to the Volkswagen Passat, but not as close as the CC was before. A very elegant exterior. Then, you know, you have some versatility from the big rear hatch, can load a lot of things there easier than with a normal sedan. Then it's important that our American friends, the viewers, get the Passat B8 technology with this very vehicle. For example, also the predictive efficiency assistant that the ACC is actually adapting to the speed limits automatically and reduces or increases the speeds again. Forgot to mention that in the driving review. And from the exterior, I think, well, really a beautiful vehicle, well done. And also, the, you know, all the reactions we have received so far were really astonishing. Interior, I think also very beautiful done. This con definitely comes close to the one of the Passat. Great interior build quality. Driving wise, very sovereign due to the long wheelbase. Still agile from the progressive steering and everything. So very relaxed, enjoyable ride, a great motorway vehicle. Consumption could be a little bit lower and also the visibility, especially through the B pillar. Those ones are the negative parts, definitely. Overall, I think impressive vehicle they put there. The new flagship for the Volkswagen range. What do you think? Tell me your comments right there in our section below. And of course, I hope you enjoyed this review with me. And also tune in to one of my colleagues and see you at our very next full review.